Hello IT Pros and welcome back to my IT workshop. This is your boy Alvin Drill and in this video I'm going to show you how to update or replace the processor or CPU on your desktop computer. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to find the model you have and what models are compatible with your motherboard. All right, so for that end I'm going to use an HP desktop computer. You can use any other model, Dell, Lenovo or any other, but HP is the one I have. So as you can see there, that's the one, HP ProDesk 600 G1. And this process is going to work for any other manufacturer or maybe you build the computer yourself. So I have used this computer in the past to create a budget gaming computer. If you're interested in that, you can click on the top right of this screen. So before we start, this is a good time for you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. That really helps my channel. Thank you. Thank you very much. So like I said, this I'm recording. Well, I didn't say it. I'm recording my desktop computer. This is the one. And now I'm going to use a tool called a free tool, a free software. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. It's called CPU-Z. I have used it before. So this allows you to see, to find what components are on your desktop computer. So as you can see, this is the CPU. Uh, the name is Intel Celeron G1840. That's why I want to replace it. <laughs> and the power that it uses is 53 watts. That's very important. You can see the, the package. The socket is 1150 LGA. That's common for Intel. So if you have, um, what's the name, uh, AMD, the process is exactly the same. Okay. So as you can see in the bottom, it has two cores, two threads. So I want something more powerful with more cores. All right. So that's how you find information about your computer. And then we are going to we're going to open I'm going to open um, task manager so I can show you that is the same processor as you can see Intel Celeron GPU uh, G1840 2.8 gigahertz and it has two cores right so I'm showing you this is not a virtual machine this is a, a real desktop computer so now we go to Google to find what's compatible with this motherboard with this model so here we're going to type the name of the model in my case as you have seen before HP ProDesk 600G and it's going to fill it up for me so that's the complete name a small form factor so from here we have to add something like um, product specification PC specifications so the two first uh, results are going to be most likely the ones you need so you click on it and it's going to take me in this case of course to the HP website because this is an HP computer so if you have a Dell, the process is kind of the same. If you have another, you have built it yourself, like Asus, for example, you can do it as well. So uh, here, if you uh, here is going to show you all the specifications for your desktop computer. Okay. So in this case, as you have seen, HP ProDesk 600G1, a small form factor. This is the one I showed you a few seconds ago. This is the one I'm going to show you in a few more seconds. So if you scroll down, you can see processor. So it's telling you that the all Intel fourth generation Core i3, i5, i7 is compatible. Okay, so even is giving you um, a line below that Intel uh, Core i5 4670 processor. So that's actually the one I'm going to use for this update, the one I bought, that one right there. But there are other options as well as you have seen there. So any more, any. Um, um, number let's say the 4690 if it, if it exists or 4570 i5 i3 is going to be or should be compatible okay but maybe you're saying okay that's uh, very narrow um i want more information i want more options so you can use this other website there might be others but this is the one i'm showing you i'm going to leave the link in the description below as always so uh you just um copy pay copy and paste the model you press enter and it's going to give you more options so if you see on the left cpu is giving you more options other um, models that are compatible okay so you see there and core i7 and i5 and if you compare them the i5 they are pretty close from one another so that's telling you that well you have more options now so obviously i'm not going to to buy it new i don't know if it exists new but even if it did i'd rather to buy it used that way it's cheaper that way it's a budget pc in this game in this case a budget gaming uh computer so that's what i want to do so i bought it from um ebay and actually the exact model that i bought is the intel core i5 4670 3.4 gigahertz quad core okay i'm going to leave the link in the description below if you're interested but you can get any other model so here uh, like i told you um, um uh, i went to ebay and I'm just typing a, a model over there. 
So you can see the price that the one I bought cost me $50 plus taxes 53. So that's pretty cheap in my opinion. All right. So once you have, once you know what you have, then you get, then you find what models are compatible with your motherboard, you get it. And well, the next step is to replace it, right? So I don't have anything else to show you here and I'll see you in a few seconds. Welcome back. So uh, before we start, I'm showing you that I'm not wearing any jewelry or watches and I'm going to discharge myself of any static electricity that I might have in my body by touching the metallic case for a few seconds. So that way I don't damage the circuitry. So I'm going to show you around. This is how it looks. This is the video card I installed for to turn this desktop PC in a gaming computer. So I'm going to disconnect it. This is the SSD. Uh, it has Windows installed on it and this is the power supply. So like I mentioned before, make sure that the power supply has enough well power to support the new hardware. In this case, the new um, processor and in my specific case, the new uh, video card. So uh, this is the um, heat sink for the processor. And again, make sure that the power supply has enough <laughs> juice for this new hardware. So uh, the, uh, now I'm going to show you the processor, the one I bought from eBay. This is the Intel Core i5-4670. I don't know if you can read it very well, what it says on the, on it, uh, on the surface itself, but if not, we are going to check it on Windows. So this is how it looks. And since it's a used one, it's not new, it came in this kind of uh, envelope. So don't expect anything fancy. The point is that it works. So that, that's the important thing. The next thing we're going to need is a thermal paste. Uh, if you have it, that's great. If not, the link is going to be in the video description below. So we also need it, okay? This one is new. Uh, and this is my first time replacing the, 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 uh, the processor on a desktop computer. So uh, I'm, um, it has four screws, as you have seen, and I'm going to use my uh, plain head screwdriver to remove it. So I'm going to remove that kind of case over there. So I'm going to do it. It's pretty simple. And the screws are going to be loose. You're, you are not going to really remove them. So it's all like monolithic. So you see this cable, that's the power for the fan. So we're going to disconnect it. It's simple. And there is another one that I didn't see. So we're going to disconnect it as well. So we do that and this is how it looks from the back. Now you can see the processor over there. So it's pretty simple to remove. It has this kind of simple lock. So you have to um, move it to the right, that part, like that. It's super easy. And now it's loose. Now you, you, it has no, it, there is no locked left. So you just pull it up like that. Now you cannot see what it says because uh, the, the thermal paste is covering everything. But uh, as you have seen, it's Intel Intel um, Core, I believe. It's not Core, it's dual core, Celeron. So now this is the new processor. And as you can see, uh, as you can see, I'm going to show you, it has like uh, these gaps that you have to make match. It has two on, on the top uh, on either side. So you have to make it match with the ones that the processor has. So it's pretty simple to put. There is no other way that you can install a processor. So you put it like that and very gently you put it that way. You don't have to push it or anything. You have to make sure that it fits. That's pretty much it. Now you're, we're going to secure it back. And as you can see, I'm going to secure it. I'm going to lock it like that. That's pretty much it. That's the installation. <laughs> Now with the thermal paste, I'm going to add three lines. There are ma uh, many methods to do this, but I just want, I'm just going to put three lines and then they, they are going to be spread. So that's how it looks, pretty simple. And now we're going to put back uh, the heatsink and the fan. So the process is, I mean, you just put it back. You just make sure that all the screws are in place. And uh, now I'm um, connecting all, all the, the fans. And now you screws, you put back the screws very quick. That's pretty much it. That's pretty simple to do. As you guys have, you have seen, it's not very difficult at all. Now I'm going to connect back the, uh, the video card. I make sure that everything is connected, nothing is loose. So now I'm going to put everything together. Well, everything is put together. Now I'm going to turn it on. 
Now, I don't have a video for this part because I thought it was going to be a walk in the park. However, when I turned it on, the computer rebooted itself three times. After that, I was like, hey, what, why is this happening? I entered the BIOS. I was able to see uh, the new processor, the i5. So no problems there. Everything was um, showing correctly. So I quit the BIOS. Um, Windows was finally booting up, so I was happy about that. But I, uh, I show uh, it showed this error, the blue screen of that. So uh, as you know, this is automatic. It reaches 100 and it reboots itself. But it, is, it was frozen in 100% for, I don't know, two minutes or so. So I decided to manually reboot the computer. And after that, Windows loaded with no problems. Once I was able to log into Windows, it's going to look like this. So this is the same desktop computer, the same icons. By the way, I have done a video in the past on which I upgrade the BIOS version of this specific model. That's very advisable if you're going to replace or add more hardware. So if you're interested in that, you can click on the top right of this screen. Now I'm going to open CPU Z as we did before. So you can see the CPU now is Intel Core i5-4670. You can see four cores, four threads. I'm going to go to the main board and the manufacturer is HP and the model is 18E7, like we have seen before. So that's the video card. And as you can see, it's working. So now I'm going to open a task manager and here we're going to go to performance. So I can show you that it says the i5-4670 CPU 3.4 gigahertz. So the, uh, the processor is working very high, I mean 100%, but it's going to go down uh, in a few more seconds, as you can see over there. So uh, what I'm going to do in the next video is, since this is a budget gaming computer, uh, we're going to test how changing the processor enhances the uh, gaming experience, all right? So, but if you're only here for the processor, replacing the processor, that's how you do it. That's the problems you have. That's what you have to take into consideration, okay? So maybe now you want to watch these two videos. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any other comment or questions, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, as you know, I'll see you in the next one.